In this 10 minute video, we are going to look at how to create an app with a SharePoint list. We'll create a basic app that can view the data in our SharePoint list. Let's start by setting up the SharePoint site where we'll build our user profile app. First, open your web browser and go to office.com. This is where we'll begin our journey. Once you're on the Office homepage, you'll notice an app launcher in the top left here. Click on it, and from the list of available apps, select SharePoint. This will take us to SharePoint, where we'll create our site. We are going to import the data from this user profile Excel file. You can find a link to it in the description. When we open it, we can see, example, user data in a table. I'll close that. Now that we're in SharePoint, let's create our site. Click on Create Site. You'll be prompted to choose a site type. Select Team Site. Give your site a name. For this tutorial, we'll call it SharePoint Demo, but you can choose any name you prefer. Add a short description as well. Click on Finish. Yay! We'll import our data into a new list, so click on New and then List. Choose from Excel. When this window pops up to browse templates, just choose Maybe Later. <laughs> Click on Upload File and navigate to your User Profile Excel file. I'll have a quick scan to make sure my data was imported correctly. This looks good to me, so I'll click Next. The name of this list is User Profile, which is fine, so I'll click Create. So, we've set up our SharePoint site with our data, which serves as the foundation for building our user profile app. Next, we'll dive into creating the app itself. I'll go back to my Office homepage, click on the App Launcher, and we'll choose Power Apps. On the dashboard, we'll click on Create here in the left menu. We'll then choose Blank App. I'm faced with three options, but I'll go ahead and choose the Blank Canvas app. Give the app a name. I'll name mine User Profile with SharePoint Data and I'll click on Create. I'll skip the welcome screen. The first thing I'll do is create the main screen by clicking New Screen and choosing Sidebar Layout. I'll rename this screen to Main Screen, and I'll delete Screen 1. Let's add a bit of color to this header. Here on the right, I'll click on Color, and I'll choose this light blue color. Whoa. Nice. Let's add a label by clicking on Insert and choosing Text Label from the menu. I'll update this label to User Profile Example. Let's now fix its placement. First, I'll switch on the Flexible Width. We can see that stretches the text box to the full width of the container. I'll center this vertically and horizontally. I'll also change the font to 25 and make it bold. That looks better. Next, we're going to add some user information. For this, we'll use the user function. The user function returns a record of information about the current user. We'll set the text property to the email address of the user currently logged in. The label email will go in quotation marks and we concatenate the variable with an ampersand, the variable being that of the user's email. Let me just fix this text box to stretch the full width of the container and we'll add another text label for the user's name. I'll type in name in quotation marks for the label and concatenate this with the user's full name. Note that this red X error indicator disappears once we have finished our formula. Let's also add the user's profile pic. Click on Insert, choose Image, and I'll move this to the top. I'm going to set the image property to the image of the user with the user function. So with the image property set, I'll type user parenthesis dot image. I'm also going to add some padding to my image, so I'll set the top padding to 20 pixels. Now, for the important part, we're going to grab data from our SharePoint list. To do this, we'll insert a gallery. We can see we have different galleries to choose from. I'll click on horizontal gallery first to see what that would look like. Look okay, but I think I'll go with the vertical gallery, so I'll select that and press the delete key. I'll go ahead and choose the vertical gallery. Next, I'll select my data source. I'll search for my SharePoint connection and select that. 
Although the sites shown are blurred out, when I search for the demo site I set up earlier, it is not actually coming up. So what I can do is go to my SharePoint site, where my list is. I'll copy the URL and paste it into the input box for the SharePoint URL connection. I'll click on connect and then choose my user profile list. Click connect again and we can see our data being pulled in nicely. I'm going to add a title, so I'll insert a text label and put in user profile data from SharePoint as the title. I'll also move it to the top of the gallery, so I'll select it. And in the tree view, I'll click the three dots beside the label and choose move to the top. I'll set the container alignment to custom and increase the font size to 20. Now let's play our app to see what that looks like. As we can see, when we click on the record arrows, nothing actually happens. So there's a bit more work needed to view the actual records. To do this, we'll create another screen. This time, I'll choose the header and footer layout. Again, I'll give my header the same light blue color. Wow. Let's insert a label in the head for a title. I'll insert the title user details. I'll update the formatting for the title. First, let's change the font to 25 pixels. I'll align it to the center and set the flexible width to on. I'll click the main container and go to insert and this time add the edit form. I can click here to connect to the SharePoint list or I can select the data source here on the right. So from this drop-down list, I'll choose user profile. We only want to view the record and not edit the record, so I'll change the default mode from edit to view. We then have to tell Power Apps which item we want to view. To do this, I go to the advanced tab here on the right and scroll down to the item. We need to reference the item from our gallery, so I'll take a quick look in the tree view at what our gallery was called. And uh, we see here that the name defaulted to gallery two. In the item box, I'll type gallery two dot selected. Wonderful. In the tree view, I'll click on the main screen and press play to see our app in action. When I click on the arrow now, it's not doing anything yet. We need to assign an action to these items in this gallery. So I'll select the gallery in our tree view and change the on select property. We want to navigate to our other screen when we select one of our items. We use the navigate function and indicate which screen to navigate to. Scrolling down, we can see it's called screen five. We can also specify a transition type. So I'll choose cover right for this example. Let's play that. It's working. Although it would be nice to be able to browse back to the main screen so that we can view the other records. So let's do that last step. I'll select the header and I'll insert the back icon or back arrow. So with this back arrow selected, we change the on select property and use the back function for it. And there you have it in just 10 minutes, we've created a SharePoint list app. We set up our SharePoint site designed the app and connected it to our data source. We added user-specific information, built navigation between screens, and crafted a sleek user interface. Now you're equipped to customize and expand this app to fit your needs. If you would like to watch the beginner's course, click on the icon that's popping up now. For any questions or help, drop a comment below. Thanks for tuning in and happy app making. If you are still watching and knowing people's attention span these days, congratulations, I've got something exciting to share with you. If you're into tech and looking to up your Power Apps game, check out this online education platform called Enterprise DNA. They offer intermediate courses that focus on Power Platform certifications like the PL900 certificate. Employers value these certifications, especially if you're just starting out. So if you wanna prepare for these exams, Click the link in the description to learn more. It's an affiliate link, but I do genuinely endorse it. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you soon.